Hi, this is Fern G. Zedcar, website www.ferngzedcar.com. Welcome to my Facebook Live reading, Family, Water, Part 2, Water. I am Fern G. Zedcar and welcome to my themed poetry reading series. I am now going to start my second theme, Water, and I will take questions after that or read your comments if you have any. So I was doing a little bit of research and apparently 71% uh, of the earth is covered by water and approximately 60% of an adult human body is composed of water. So water is really involved in so many aspects of life and obviously we need it for our survival. So here are a few applications or instances of how water affects us. I wrote this poem after taking my son fishing. Lake Winnipeg. Furious crests surge, billow, and pummel the shore, spewing spray like a geyser from a whale's blowhole. Foamy gray waves crash with a deafening roar as they ebb and they flow and they pitch and they roll. Surly leaden clouds surrender muted beams of light, revealing a barely discernible pinpoint adrift, spied by weary seagulls, buffeted by winds in mid-flight. It's a fisherman bravely casting a net from his skiff. Sailboats docked in the marina bob upon the lake, masts rhythmically rising and falling in sync, nestled alongside the boardwalk, sheltered from the wake, with only the breakwater separating them from the brink. Um, the Solitary Fisherman is another poem. It's in keeping with how people use water for their livelihoods. And I would like to think that this character I created uh, expresses the same determination as Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea. The Solitary Fisherman. Tiny beads of sunlight dance upon a rippling river, twinkling like stars that have fallen from the sky. Floating with the current, eider ducks bob by as the solitary fisherman waits for his line to quiver. He stubbornly resolves to catch a fish at any cost, sitting outside all day accompanied by his gear and the lone gull perched beside him on the pier, content to bide their time so opportunity is not lost. The sun weathers his tired skin as he waits for a bite while he conjures images of fish to be caught. The old man strokes a stubble chin, his mind deep in thought. Man versus fish locked in Olympian fight. Suddenly he's startled by a tug on the line. Leaping to attention, he anticipates his prey. The result of patient efforts over the course of the day. With grim determination, he says, fish, you are mine. He grapples with the rod, not allowing any slack. Sinewy muscles flex as he reels his opponent in. His face reveals a hint of a smile, which becomes an ironic grin. The result of a day's labor, a small fish he throws back. Well, um, the Hemingway reference I mentioned a minute ago is actually about a marlin. And so I wrote a marlin poem. And I thought it would also be interesting as a portrait of uh, life below the surface of the water. Marlin. A vertical matrix, the color of brushed platinum. Rows and columns, motionless, but for fanning fins. Interrupted by convulsive choreography, sudden jerks that regroup flat, silvery bodies into a new array of communal fin fanning. A syncopated tango that dances on until its rhythm is shattered. Sabotaged by a blue torpedo hurtling forward at 100 kilometers an hour, frenetically stabbing the school with its spear-like bill. Waters royal in a marine ecosystem of life and death conflict. Imperceptible at the sun-drenched keel surface where trophy-seeking predators higher up the food chain, await their prey with bated breath and bated hooks, vying 
for a marlin to mount over their mantles. Stream of consciousness. Water brings us life, but unfortunately, it can also do the opposite. And this is a story, a true story, uh, based on something I saw in the news. And I wrote this as a semi-visual uh, poem. So, for example, the word sinking, I would write one letter at a time, each below it, uh, vertically to mimic downward motion of sinking. And I put M dashes, which are like elongated hyphens, between each of the letters in the word slow motion to, to visually slow down the reader. And also I put the word floating as a superscript to, to give the impression of floating. Stream of consciousness. Speed, ribbons of light, impact, froth, bubbles, sinking, cold, numbness, silence. Thudding, pounding, rock against glass, a frantic slow motion water ballet, windshield shattering, shards floating, sinewy forearm oozing streams of red, consciousness, unconsciousness, consciousness, an awareness of being pride, wrenched from her coffin, wrenched from icy waters, saved by inches, and bitterly resentful of her failed suicide. Well, my husband and I went on a cruise a while back, and we were so impressed. I was so impressed by the scenery that I wrote this poem. And I was very intrigued by the concept of water itself drowning. Sapphire seas, inky swells heave, the rhythmic breathing of sapphire seas crested with flashes of gold as the sun sinks below the horizon and drowns the waters in darkness. Many people experience a fear of water and this poem uh, describes someone's attempt to overcome that fear and I call it in over my head. A group of two-year-olds peers at me, observing like partially submerged frogs, eyes barely above their flutter boards. Plastic orange water wings keep them afloat as they splash and pee in the water, while I cling to the ledge of the pool, summoning all my courage to let go and finally be free of years of what ifs, even if I am in over my head. And I would like to finish with a poem that I actually wrote in French as well, uh, Tentatrice. It's, but this poem, I'm reading it in English, is called Temptress. Um, and uh, as a final tribute to the theme of water, I wanted to honor uh, the spirit of love and also the beautiful mermaid legends. Temptress. A mermaid beckons, and enchanted, he wanders into the surf where she is swimming. Full lips slightly parted, flowing golden tresses, bare breasts, an iridescent silvery tail fin caressed by the waves. His beloved gently guides her mortal lover throughout Poseidon's kingdom, a place where eternity is found among the coral and seaweed. The fantasy of a sandy-haired boy. Well, thank you. I, I hope you enjoyed the poems that I read. As I mentioned earlier, for more information, you can visit my website at www.ferngzcar, my Wikipedia page under ferngzcar. Um, I invite you to view my YouTube channel, also under ferngzcar. Uh, subscription is free, so once you go to YouTube, Fernji said car, you push the red subscription button and you can have uh, access to all kinds of videos. Um, and finally, my book, Shards of Crystal, is by Sacred Wood Publishing, is available on Amazon. Acknowledgements. All poems contained herein copyright Fern G. Z. Carr. Part two is an excerpt from the original full video, which was kindly sponsored by the League of Canadian Poets and the Canada Council for the Arts.
Thanks very much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like and please be sure to subscribe. For more poetry, my book Shards of Crystal is available on Amazon. Thanks again and stay tuned for a new video every Wednesday.